perilous times. We're in perilous times. What the Apostle Paul and the Apostle Peter and the Apostle John and all of these men of God spoke of, Jude and all of these guys, we're in it. We got to make our calling and election sure. We can't afford to have our hearts defiled by evil thoughts and all kind of sexual perversions and deceitfulness and deceitfulness of riches and all this. <laughs> oh God, there's nothing wrong with going being rich. Don't get me wrong. Nothing wrong with being it. But if you love the money, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. If you're going to sell your soul, you're going to take your time that you, sh you could be spending with God and just after you've done your work, all you can do is you're just there scrolling, 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 or on the computer. Da, 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 da. Listen, you're, you, you sold yourself. You sold yourself. Oh, God. Whew, let me just get back on track. I'm, I, I'm feeling the anointing and I go off sometimes. Well, actually, it's not going off. I'm going actually where God wants me to go. So he that hath an ear to hear, let them hear what the Spirit is saying. But do not fall for the trap. The mask, they put on the mask, it's like an initiation as far as I'm concerned. It's, you, 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 you're t you, they're teaching you, especially children, not to trust the next person. All you can see is their eyes. You can't see the very, the facial expressions. Listen, we don't just communicate with our voices. We communicate with our, the, the, the tone of voice, the, 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 the influctuations of our eyes, our, our facial expression, and children, children that's born these days, they're not seeing that in other children. They're not seeing that in other human beings. All they're looking at are masked figures. So what is that teaching us? Don't trust people. Everybody is an enemy. Look out for yourself, because you just don't know what's going to happen, what's behind those eyes. That's a mind job that's been done right around the world. But if you draw close to the Lord in such a time like this, you are going to save your soul. Your mind is going to be sober thinking and you will see things the way that God sees it. And you will not be sucked into the vortex of destruction that is all over the world right now. And folks, this is the beginning of sorrows. Mm -hmm. Just the beginning. Hallelujah. All right. Can I continue? Let me just continue here. All right. So now we're in the age of human government. So what does that mean? <laughs> it means that now you're going to get kingdoms. You're going to, this is the beginning of kingdoms, human government, because there were no kingdoms before. All right. People were of one blood and they were one language and, and everybody was just doing, you know, kind of like how locusts, work and you know locusts they don't have a leader but they seem to all flow together they do this everything flows together that's how human beings were like they were like locusts okay no leader but wise in what they're doing they can get things done and everyone just collaborates well now the earth is split there are now continents and god the first law of commandments that man ever received was be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, and take dominion. So God wants man to spread out and take dominion over the earth because we are like God. We're made like little gods. Please understand when I say this. We are not gods, but we are the offspring of God. So the Lord wants us to rule. And incidentally, this is why Satan hates us, because we are in the image of God. So he doesn't want us to rule. He wants to rule over us. Satan wants us to bow to him so he can have preeminence over us. But when we are in the word of God, we rule over him. Obedience to God's word gives us the rule over him. Are you hearing me? All right then. So God wants people to scatter. But one man rises up, a, son, a grandson of Ham, and his name is Nimrod. Nimrod. And he becomes the first Antichrist. He sets up human government and he says, I am the law. 
you all bow down and worship me. And guess what? He was such an enigmatic, enigmatic, oh, am I saying that right? He was so magnetic and he was so powerful. He was a hunter of souls. He was just uh, an imposing figure. I've read ancient stories of Gilgamesh. I like these old ancient stories. And, I, and Gilgamesh actually... It's a Babylonian tale of a man who was so powerful, he was two-thirds God and one part man, you know, and Gilgamesh. That was Nimrod. They're trying to depict Nimrod. Mm. And this man was born on the 25th of December, just at the rising, just after the, the sun goes at its lowest ebb, and then he comes up. Yes, he was born around that time. And to this day, people celebrate the birthday of Nimrod. This is how imposing and powerful and demonic that this man was. He rose up in the sea of human masses and people gravitated towards him. And he built uh, various cities like Nineveh and Arkad and Erech and the famous one, Babylon. And he built, started to build a tower because he wanted to go in the face of God. If there's another flood coming, because remember, the flood story was right there. It was just like yesterday for these people. We can observe the stars and we can see when another flood is coming and we will be able to now prepare ourselves. So God says, okay, I'm going to destroy the works of man because everybody's on one accord. They're building a one world system that they can defy me. I ain't having it. And he smote the peoples. And what happened? Different languages. Different languages. And so, um, can you all see me? You all can see me still? Yeah, okay. Something just came up on my screen. Okay. So, the different languages came up. And I also believe, <clears throat> to a certain extent, different facial features. And if it didn't happen then, it happened.